Okay, uh, this web tutorial is for 353 and it will show you how to use Gmail and how to do the imports so that you can use this in a future web project. Uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll create a new project. In this case we'll just do a Java application to keep it simple. And we'll name it uh, Gmail email. And you'll notice that you need to check off create main class if you're doing it strictly as a Java, but uh, otherwise you can just add it to a method in your bean later on. We'll go ahead and click finish. And it already generates the class that we need. Um, I've got some pre-canned code here that I'm going to copy and paste in and talk about. So that when you do this and you see errors, you'll know how to correct them. The first thing you'll notice is that after I pasted the code, that we have a lot of red lines there and those are nothing to be afraid of we'll fix them they're more or less just import statements that we need the next step that we need to do is actually import the jar files and what you'll do is you actually right click on the project you go to properties go to libraries and then you should see a button that says add jar folder you'll click there and for simplicity I put the two jar files that you need directly on the desktop so the first one that I'll import is the mail.jar, which is the most important. The next one that we'll need, and this actually you may not need this. It just depends on what version of NetBeans you're using. If you have a version that's uh, 6.0 or below, you will need the Java Enterprise Edition API to put that in there. The next part, you'll just go ahead and click OK. And if everything imported correctly, you should be able to check your libraries folder and see mail.jar and java api slash 6.0.jar the next part that we're going to go is you should still see the red uh, red import statements but to fix those you can either go here and add import for java.util properties and when you click that you'll see that the red line goes away and an import statement's been created for you automatically up here the next one that you can do is you can individually go through and add import statements for each one of these and again it's just doing that but to save time I'm gonna go ahead and copy some pre-canned import statements here over the ones that we just did and you'll notice that there's a properties a message message exception session transport um, internet address, my message, and password authentication. Uh, you can shorten this by putting a star there before the semicolon, and you can get rid of most of the javax.mail because that will import the rest of the the import statements. But for simplicity, and so you can trace back some errors if you're having them, we'll just keep all the import statements there. So now when you scroll down through the code, after I pay, um, actually pasted those import statements in, you'll see that it's actually all cleared up. But going forward, let's explain some of the code so you actually know what's going on there. The first part is you'll see that I have two final strings. One's named username and one name is password. The first one, username, is a generic Gmail account that I just created. And the password is the password to the generic Gmail account that I created because this is simply used as a, a way for me to send emails through my application. The next part here is we see the properties props the, um, object. And the reason why you have this is it sets the authentication to true, you're enabled to true, and the most important part here is you'll see that it points to where the smtp.gmail.com server is actually located, and you'll also want to make sure that it's set to port 587 when you do this. Otherwise, you should get an error when you try to run the program. The next part here is our session, which does a password, or a password authentication against Google, uh, Google server. And basically what this does is it takes the username, which is again that generic Gmail that I just talked about, and the password for it, and puts it into Gmail for me so that it can actually access it. The next part, you'll see a try catch. Um, the try catch itself is used to catch any bad emails that are in there. So if I entered in a uh, an email address that doesn't exist, or if it's in a bad format that you couldn't send through, you should get a, uh, an exception email from Gmail telling you that this email either was bad or doesn't exist, something to that extent. But you'll see a, a comment in your inbox. The next part is we have a message object, and this message object really isn't anything too tricky. It's more or less how you're setting up your email and the to's and from's and the content of the body. 
So the internet of it, uh, the first part here is the set from is the from email address, and again the from email address is my generic Gmail account. And be sure, uh, you, uh, please understand that you can also put getter methods to put different emails to send this from here. It doesn't have to be hard coded. The next one that you have is the Gmail email address. And this is actually who it's going to, like whoever you want to send this to. And again, it doesn't need to be hard coded, but just for this example, it's to simplify that. Um, I used a getter, and it took an array list, so I could do a giant mass email. That's kind of a way to spam, so you need to be careful when you do that because Gmail will pick that up as spam if you do it too many times. Um, the next part is set subject, and this will say my first email and that just says the subject of the email and the next part is set content which is not necessarily tricky but it's where you can actually put the content of your message you can actually code HTML around it to give it some type of look or feel but the important part of this is that you need to include the argument of text slash HTML and it needs to be in quotes and what that does is actually makes the email read uh, the HTML tags that are around it because without that it'll simply see text and you'll see like H body style all that stuff will pull in and around the, the basic text that you have. The last part here you'll see is transport.send message and there's no real trick to this. This is actually what takes the message object and sends it through in the SMTP server and when you get your email it contains this information that we just talked about. Um, a check that I've put in here that I suggest everybody should put in is a system.out print line that just simply says, was the email sent? And you could say done, or if you wanted to, you could set this to be an attribute so it shows you the list of people that were actually emailed. But that just verifies that the code has fired. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and run this. And we will check out to see if I actually received anything. And you'll notice that down here in the output, it says, the was the email sent done is there. So it looks like the code did fire correctly. And I noticed down here in the Internet Explorer, I've got it, a new email that was just sent now at 12.11. So you can see it matches up there. No fake strings or anything like that. And if you go in here, you'll, you'll see it says my first email for the subject. And if you're getting this, you wrote your first email. So in a nutshell, that is how you send a, an email through the Gmail server.